morning, how are you all today? I'm Reva with Quality Sewing, and today in our How Do I, we're gonna look at how to customize apparel and t-shirts using heat set vinyl. So like this one, isn't this cute? Instant human, just add coffee. I think I know some people that that applies to. You can also do fun things like this one, and I love this one. If life gives you lemons, keep them because they're free lemons, right? So I think that's cute. But there's also things like uh, the metallic vinyls that you can use, which are really fun. And you can even do some really cool stuff like that with the glitter. Isn't that fun? So this is a reversible cape, Superman and Captain America. I know Captain America doesn't wear a cape, but what kid doesn't love a cape anyway? Okay, so we're going to talk about how to how to make uh, custom t-shirts like this. So what we're using today is the scan and cut, heat set vinyl, and of course a t-shirt. Now, if you're watching this, don't worry about trying to memorize everything. You're gonna be able to find the replay on our Facebook page and also on YouTube. And you can also go to our website at qualitysewing.com and look under inspiration. You'll be able to find uh, the uh, content there as well. Okay, so if you have any questions, please type them into the notes and then um, we will answer questions as we go along. So if you're ready, we're going to get started. So there's a couple of things that you're going to need. So one of them is art and one of them is the vinyl. I have some selection of vinyls here. Look at how cool that one is. I mean, glittery aqua. I mean, that's so much fun. There's a solid white. This one I think we're going to use today because it's a really pretty uh, kind of a metallic uh, burgundy and then there's other colors as well so you have lots of different choices now there's a difference in vinyl there's heat set vinyl and sticker vinyl sticker vinyl is something that you would put on a tumbler mug or on your wall things like that and they they have sticky on the back heat set vinyl has absolutely no sticky on it at all okay one side is kind of matte and one is shiny and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute but the adhesive that's on the back side of heat set vinyl activates, we'll get, go figure, with heat, okay? So let's take a look at what we've got here. So this is a roll of heat set vinyl. Your instructions are in here. So you want to keep those instructions because each style of vinyl may have different heating requirements and things like that. So this one, for example, you're going to use a cotton setting and you're going to press it for at least 10 seconds. And let me make sure it is a, do, 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 do. and it says, okay, some of them are called a cool peel. That means you have to let it cool completely. This one doesn't say that, so I'm gonna assume it's a hot peel, but we can talk about what to do then. So I take my instructions and I put it inside my roll, or I try to put it inside my roll. Okay, so then that way I always have the instructions for what I'm working with. Okay, so you can see that this is a really pretty color and on the roll you can see the color. When you take the wrapper off and you open it up, this one has a duller side that's not even as pretty in color. This is a side that goes to your t-shirt. This is where the adhesive is. On this white piece, and this is just a scrap left, you can see one side is a very, very shiny, the other is matte, but they're the same color. The matte side is a side we're going to put down to the shirt or the draperies or the pillow top or whatever you're making. Now this is just a scrap, but it's actually a lot of a lot of good usable material. So I'm not gonna throw this away. I'm gonna put that inside my tube as well. So that way I have that left and we can use it again later. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to cut this to fit my design. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut it because I happen to know the size of the design that we're working with today. So I'm gonna cut a piece that is eight inches and this, uh, the the roll of vinyl is actually uh, 12 inches wide, so that's perfect. But I'm just gonna cut myself an eight inch piece and that gives me enough to test and everything like that. And then I'll just set it here and now we're gonna put this onto our mat. And I know I'm kind of going out of order, but we will get to what to do on your machine and everything there. Now your mats have a clear carrier sheet. 
that you're going to want to remove. And I always put it outside down the raw, right, you know, the, the part that was stuck to the mat up. So that way I know to put it right back down that way. So this is a low tack mat. This uh, vinyl has that clear, uh, the, the shiny side, and that sticks really, really well. So you can use a low tack mat for this. Um, you can also use your standard mat, but just know that it's going to get quite, it might hold even better than what this will hold. So you want to get that down and you want to try to get all the little, the little uh, bubbles out. So what I do a lot of times is just, we'll just work it a little bit at a time. And then I'm going to go to this other side and peel it back up and get those bubbles out. Because if you have a bubble, it could not cut as well there. So I'm going to put this down and then let me grab my little, my little spatula or my little smoother here. And I'm just going to make sure that this gets really nicely adhered to my mat because I don't want it lifting up. And that can help get rid of some of the bubbles as well. Okay, so now I've got my vinyl on and now we're ready to, um, to cut our design. So, um, We'll come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about vinyl when we get into the weeding, but I'm going to move this out of our way so that way we can look at the machine. Okay, so come on over here. This is the Brothers Scan and Cut. Now this is the um, DX model. DX means that it has an auto blade, which means it's going to automatically um, sense how thick your materials are and it will cut without you having to adjust the blade. The older scan and cuts, you adjusted the blade for the proper depth. And I know many of us cut through our mats. I don't know how that happened. And I even did that, even though I've been using electronic cutters that didn't have any auto blade system for probably a decade. And um, I still did it. So it does happen. Okay, now I have my design on a USB stick. So I'm gonna put that in the machine. It, this is also a Wi-Fi machine, so you could just send it right from your computer if you're hooked into your Wi-Fi at home. Okay, so, oh, look at this. It also says that there's an update available because it is Wi-Fi, and so I could go in and update it right now, but I'm not gonna because I wanna show you some stuff. Okay, so you can go through and you can choose to use uh, different types of um, uh, features. You can go in here and get different patterns. There's lots of different ca uh, categories, including Disney. I'm going to go in and just get a shape really quick. I just want to have that shape on our mat. And it's probably hard to see it's right here. In fact, maybe I can, can I dim? Let's see if I can, nope, that did not work. I was trying to dim. Oh, that's for something different. What am I doing? I want to see if I could uh, fade it down, but not where I am. Okay. Anyway, so here's my little square. You can see it probably when it's in red, but I want to add the design that is on my stick. So I'm going to go to retrieve data and I'm going to use the USB stick. Okay. And this is the one that I want to use today. So here it is. It says, have fun, don't die, which apparently is what the kids use in the equestrian club before they perform. So it's kind of like break a leg. Uh, for for that so that's what we're going to use we're going to say okay now heat set vinyl if you remember i'm going to reach right over here if you remember we put the pretty side down on, on the vinyl so we're actually cutting this backwards because this has to flip and go onto the garment so the pretty side is out so i'm going to want to mirror image this if you're using heat set vinyl you need to mirror image if you're using regular sticker vinyl you do not need to mirror image okay so i have my design right here have fun don't die i'm going to go to edit and object edit and i want to mirror image and there it is now it's backwards okay and i'm going to bring this up to where i want it to be I want it to cut right about there now I'm going to say OK, and here is how we can scroll through the different designs. Now remember I have that little box on here and then I have my words. So I can touch the select arrow and it goes and finds my little box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a, a frame to cut out right around my design. You don't need to do this since I cut the vinyl small anyway. You don't need to do this. But if you had a bigger piece and you're trying to conserve your space, you this would work for you. So I'm going to touch, change the size. 
and then I'm going to make this wider because I need this to be about 11 and a half inches. It says that your mat is, you have a 12 by 12 mat, but your cutting surface is actually just over, um, well, it's just over um, 11 and a half inches. So now that moved it width and height. I want to turn that off so that I can make the height smaller so I can nestle that up and make that fit right around because the point of this is to give yourself a nice perimeter that you don't have to um, worry about cutting outside or wasting your, your materials. So now I'm going to say OK and I'm going to use my nudge buttons just to move it over a little bit and that looks great. Okay, well, all right, so now we are ready to start uh, cutting. So I'm going to say OK. And now what I want to do is load my mat. So I'm going to grab my mat. And you want to put it in so the arrow is pointing into the machine. And when we load, you want to get the edges underneath the black rollers. Make sure it's seated all the way in, that it's not crooked. You want it all the way in. And then just lightly have your hands here. You don't want to push too hard. You want to have it hold it enough so it's not going to fall out, but you want to give it a little, not so much that it won't take it. And this button right here is a load mat. So I'm going to touch that and it's going to load the mat. And once it's grabbed it, I'm going to let go. And then it's actually reading the calibration bits on here. So it knows what mat you have and, and everything. So if you had a scanning mat, it would, it would know that. Okay, so now we're ready to cut. So I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm going to say, it says, please select. What do you want to do? Do you want to cut, draw, emboss, foil, or pierce? And I want to cut. And when it gets here, you, you can do a few things in the settings here. So you can change the speed that you cut with, the pressure, and you can cut... Uh, blade pressure. If you want to do it manually, you can do that. But what I want to do is come over here and look at half cuts. And I want that to be on. Because what we're cutting is this little guy right here. This is the right side. This is a side that was up. Okay, remember we cut it in mirror image. But this is the carrier sheet that's the shiny part. This is what's shiny on the roll is this carrier sheet. And we don't want to cut through the carrier sheet because this helps keep it all in perfect alignment. And it also is a heat safe um, situation for your, um, for your, uh, for ironing it. Okay. All right. So now that we have that, I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, start. And now it's going to take us a couple of minutes to, to cut. Let's see, it just figured out how thick the mat was. Now it's coming over here and it is going to figure out how, much, how thick the material is. Then it will start to cut. Now there's also a test cut on here, which I did not do, but I've been cutting this morning. So I'm pretty confident at, at what we have going on here. We'll see if that holds true, right? <laughs> so this could take a few minutes to cut. So let's go back and talk a little bit about what we're gonna get. So I'm gonna bring my table back over so we can see. And um, what we're gonna do here is let's look at, uh, let's look at our design really quick. So our design, remember the shiny side was down on the mat and that's the wrong, the right side, but it's wrong, okay? Because you we put the shiny side down and then we cut it out and then we remove the parts of the design that you don't want to have, all the extra stuff, and that's called weeding, okay? And so this is the um, embellish weeding tool, and it works really well to weed out the bits and pieces, and that I will show you how to do when this is done cutting, okay? But let's talk about how we get this stuck to our shirt, okay? So I'm going to grab a sweatshirt here, and actually, I'm going to, let me move some stuff here so I have them out of my way because I want to kind of center myself on my workspace and I'm going to set him right there and I have a pressing mat. Now, if you have um, a nice pressing surface, we even have um, mats, the wool mats that are 
20 some inches wide. They're 14 by 24, I think. Those are an awesome size because then you can kind of lay out your whole shirt. Let me move this because you probably can't even see me. Okay, so you, then you can lay out the whole thing there and then you have more of a press service. But also if you have a heat press like an Elna press or something that you got for quilting or garments, that works phenomenally because they don't have any steam holes in them. And as you see, our iron does and we'll talk about that in a second as well, okay? So our instructions said that we needed to, to um, heat um, our vinyl for um, 10 seconds with the vinyl on. So what I want to do to find where, how I want my uh, stuff laid out is I try to sit or stand square at my table and I want to look at my, um, I'm going to move over a little bit because I'm in the way of, of the cutter. Um, I want to look at the shirt and how it's laid out. And if I'm square to the table, I can pretty much see how it is. Um, and I'm going to, I look usually at the underarm first and I'm going to get that into position where I'm looking at it and the whole, the whole mat, little wool mat came with me. Okay. So I have that there and then I'm going to look at my shoulders, make sure they're straight and make sure you have your pressing surface all there. Now, if you want to, I'll take like my 24 inch ruler and just make sure that I have the same distance from armpit to armpit and the edge of my, my cutting table or my surface. Um, and then I know that I'm straight. So today I'm just going to do a measurement. I'm three and an eighth and a little bit, and I'm three and eighth and a little bit. Okay. I'm square. I'm good. So now I'm going to take my vinyl. Okay. Now this is what I do. You can, everybody can do something different, but I want to know where the center of my vinyl is. So I'm going to fold it in half, see my comma, and then I'm bringing my H, and I'm just going to give it a little crease right at the tip so I have a crease on my center. And then I'm going to look on my center and pull it down. Now we also have um, Hope Yoder and Embellish has the centering ruler for t-shirts. It's really cool because it actually has the neckline that you lay it on and you can see exactly how far from the neckline you want it to be. I don't want to go too, down too far on a hoodie because a t-shirt neck is actually higher up. Okay, But you usually don't want to get too much lower than the armpits, right? Because then that just gets it really really low. Okay, so let's make sure we're straight there. I'll grab my ruler. Again, a 24 inch ruler works really well. If you're using that centering ruler from Embellish, you don't have to worry about that because it, um, it has all the, the markings on it for you. So I'm going to go here and yeah, I think it's pretty straight. Okay, so now we're going to iron this on and we're going to do the 10 seconds in one place. And this carrier sheet is actually a protection for your fabric. Now, remember how I said this has holes, right, on the bottom. So that means we're probably going to have to do a couple of times in the same area, but, move, but um, shift the, the position of the iron because we want to make sure that, that it gets full heat. Because where a hole is, you don't have the same amount of heat, right? And I also can't talk and count at the same time. So I'm probably not doing a full 10 seconds, but it it is pretty doggone close. And we'll go over it a couple of times to be able to make sure that we get this all set in the right spot. So lots of fun. Um, you, making your own shirts and things, customizing it, are a great way to do things for a ball club or for a, um, uh, you know, for the fa family reunion or just for your kids, something fun for them to have on their t-shirt. I know I've done, well, I've done a, used my electronic cutter for my business and I've done hundreds of, of shirts and names on backs of ball uniforms and soccer and all, you name it, I've done it. So, okay, I think that's pretty good. We'll give it a test. So what we want to do is pull it back. Oh, look, see, it's releasing really, really easy. If you get to a spot that it doesn't release off of, then that means you didn't press it long enough. So now in just a couple of minutes, we've got this great sweatshirt. Happy birthday, Ashlyn. But she's not watching, so it's okay. She doesn't know she's getting this for her birthday. Okay. So that's one there, but really super cute, right? So now let's talk about weeding. 
we have our, our pattern is done on our machine. So I'm going to push that OK and then unload the, the mat by pushing that same button. Now, I want to take this off the mat. So just separate this from the mat. You can weed while it's on the mat. You probably didn't hear that. You can weed while it's on the mat. I generally don't because I want to get my dust cover back onto my mat before I get any fuzz or something because with my luck I would probably turn it upside down and set it right on the wool mat or something like that and then you know life is not not fun okay so there's a couple of things that you can do when you weed if you have a warm area you're going to find okay you're going to find depending on the time of year that your vinyl is going to weed differently depending on the time of year if it's cold it's going to be harder to weed so like for example i'm going to try to take the outer edge off here I just take my, I'll try to do a different corner. I take my, my little um, weeding tool, my embellished weeding tool, and I'm going to slide it under the vinyl. Because remember, we have that carrier sheet. I'm not going to poke it straight down because then I'm going to try to go through everything. So I'm just going to get it in between the two and pull it off. Okay. And this is, see, see how this is kind of, this is kind of harder to pull. You can't feel it, but boy, can I. So here's a little trick, and I don't know if I can do it all this way today because, um, you know, life, right? So anyway, but when I'm at home, I will take and I will run my iron over my pressing area, and then I set this down on it, and the warmth makes it weed so much easier. So if you're doing a design that has a bunch of little things, consider, you know, doing that if you're having a challenge with it. Okay, we have script on the bottom, right? And then we have the uh, block on the top. Block is always easier to weed. So now weeding again is taking out the stuff you don't want. I want to leave the letters, so I need to get this background out of there. And see how putting that rectangle in there made a nice clean area for us to know right where to start pulling so i'm going to slide underneath that corner and the the area that's here you probably can't see it but this is the block letters so i'm going to kind of let me put it at an angle and see if you can see i'm bringing it really close to the surface and i'm rolling it back on itself and i'm going to move along and adjust where i'm pulling depending on where i am and things like the E, it's going to be, or the, the F, you know, whichever letter, if you weed in toward the opening, right? If I come this way, it's going to be easier. This came right out because I went from here to here. This came out really easy because it went from there to there, but it's not wanting to come out of here. So I would shift my direction and get it to pull out of that end. Okay. And then we'll come over here. We're going to keep going, have fun. And you're going to notice, look, the, the bottom of the H didn't want to come. So now I've got to come from a different direction. And if you want to, it's okay to get in there and you can cut, um, you know, if you have too much vinyl all over the place, go ahead and trim some off if you want to. Okay. Now I'm getting into where I'm going to find my little cursive letters. So I want this to be a little bit easier. So I'm going to oh, look how cute that is. Awesome. Okay. Let me warm this up again, and let's see if we can get in here now. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna change directions a lot with this because I want to go toward the letters. And you may not remember which way the letters go. That's okay. You'll discover that it's not working one way, and just change your direction. And go another way so this weeding technique would be the same for adhesive vinyl but you would have it this would be the right side so everything would be reading correctly to you and that's oops look it got a little bit slipped so i'm going to gently just put that back okay um you don't want to manhandle the vinyl too much because it whoop, whoop, whoop. i don't know if you can see that see it didn't even this part did I pulled probably too straight up, not at an angle enough, because it did not separate out. Let me find, let me find him here. Da -da -da. The real trials and tribulations. You just want to be really gentle so that way 
it um, will come off. I know what I'm going to do. I don't know about you, but this stuff's all in my way now. Let's get this off of here as much as possible. Okay, and while I'm doing this, are there any questions that anyone has? Put them in the chat. And then let me get this out. Don't. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the bulk of this, and I'm going to come at that one piece from a different direction. And you saw that I cut this vinyl initially with my rotary cutter. It's an old blade, so it works out really, really well for doing stuff like this. Now I have another spot right here where it's being crabby to me. So let me come in here and see if I can help it a smidge. There we go. There we go. And I'm just going to be really gentle with this. I got a corner just because it's being persnickety with me. So Reva, since this was um, secured to the garment with heat, is that going to be problematic putting it in the dryer? That is a great question. That brings up a whole bunch of other stuff that you didn't ask that I'm going to tell you about. Um, okay, no. It, it, was, it will do fine in the dryer. It's not a bad idea to go ahead and put it um, wrong side out. Okay. And I don't know if you saw what I just did. Let me come back in here. Since this had been hung up a little bit, it kind of was, you know, out of shape. So I just slid under here and just gently kind of put it back um, so it's flat. Um, so laundry. Um, it it's, will be fine in the dryer. I've washed and dried hundreds of times things that I've done for my family. Um, but wrong side out is great. The one thing you do want to make sure you do is not use fabric softener. If you use fabric softener, it will lift and start to come off because fabric softener gets into the fibers and it fills the fibers of the fabric with lovely smelly stuff that makes it really soft, but it fills that fiber and it will start to make a barrier between the fiber and it will push off the vinyl. Um, so uh, don't use fabric softener. And then also um, when you, um, a lot of the garments will say pre-wash your garment or they'll say preheat. So when you lay this out and I'll show you on the next one, you could actually do the same process that we did when we applied this. Do that to your shirt first. What that does is gets rid of any moisture that may be in the garment. Okay. All right. So I hope that more information than you asked, it does something good. Okay. So now let's talk about the fun weeding. So you've got all these negative spots and from the back, it might be hard to tell where those spots are, but when you turn them over, Oh, I got to get out my D I got to get out this. So you'll, you, they'll become more obvious. So before you apply it to your shirt, double check yourself. I'm not going to talk about that. Okay, so now the same thing applies to weeding out the area. One, you're going to kind of know this is an E, so I know in here I've got something. If you cannot see the cut line, the line that cut, pick it up and kind of shift it so your eye can see the light will hit that cut area a little bit differently. So I'm going to go in and slide in here again, and I'm going to pull it up. Now I have extra vinyl down here, so I can just stick it right there because it's faster than trying to, to trash each one, right? So let's go here, and here's this one. If you happen to try to pick up the wrong spot, you may actually see it forever on the actual piece. So if I actually stabbed this D and tried to pull it, you'll have a divot, okay? Now, when we get going here, I'm gonna take out this piece and I wanna show you this one here. In the T, there is just the tiniest little bit right there. So my finger is another good tool. So I've got the end of the O here, and I've got the out of the O here. Now when I get going, I don't even take them off. I'll wait till I have some, and then I put them all on the edge there. Now I have my A here, no big deal, but then we've got our fun bits here, and that is in the, the U here. I've got all my little nail holes, so I'm going to do them one at a time. And just pick them out and let me get rid of those because they're in my whoops because I can't see where I'm going because he's so tiny this is also not a bad idea if you 
have it left up on your scan and cut and you can refer to the image on the scan and cut so you know kind of where you're going and there's lots of letters that are actually built into the scan and cut so you can build things um, and then there's a free uh, canvas program canvas workspace on the internet that you can just use and then you can uh, do your designing right on that and then I'm just going to cut off the part that has stuff don't leave this on because it's going to stay permanently on your shirt not a good thing okay so let's look at this am I missing anything did we get everything out of it I think we did so cute I love this metallic uh, burgundy it's so pretty so now we have another sweatshirt and I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a rehash here so I'm going to lay it out I got my my pressing surface right there and we'll lay this out I want to sit square to my table so I can make sure that I'm getting him on here straight and a lot of times what I'll do too is if I don't use a measure I I see in my Am I the same distance, like each finger? You know, I use my hands too. As long as you're symmetrical, I guess that works. If you're not symmetrical, don't do it. Okay. So then we could warm up the shirt, but I actually think my, that's too hot. I'm not putting that down on there. I would use, put a press cloth and, and do that. So I'm not actually gonna do that business. Okay, so again, I want to fold it in half to make sure it's balanced and I can fold it on the bottom and I'm not folding through, just creasing my vinyl at the um, top and at the bottom and I'm eyeballing the center of that crisscross spot and bring it down oh this is so cute okay let's see if that's in the right spot and I'm going up to the the bottom of my end because those are flat up there right and let's go up here bump it up. Mm -hmm. we're standing up for this one I might have him crooked let's see I don't want it crooked a uh, little bit. All right. Okay. Are we ready? Now, I keep these around, and I not forever and ever and ever, but I keep them around because then I can have a, a larger heat. Look at that. Don't do that. I stuck it right to it. Now I gotta redo this. But then you have a larger area that's heat, heat resistant. Okay, let's re make sure I've got them straight again because I pulled that baby off. And quarter. Okay, that looks good. I think we're centered. I think we're good. Okay, do I have a nod of approval? Okay, it's your fault. You said okay. So now I, we're just going to let do this the 10 seconds and we'll move on to the next spot. Okay, so you, as you can see, you could do really fun things with your, oh, and no steam. Don't use steam because you've got plastic here. It doesn't matter anyway, right? If you try to use steam, it's not going to do a darn thing. So um, just use your nice iron and, and put it on there. So you could do beautiful things uh, for your home. You can do it for gifts, make great gifts. Um, and you can use all different types of fabrics. You can even use um, heat set vinyl and put it on metal. Uh huh. You can heat set it right onto metal. And to do that, you're gonna need some hot pads. So like if it's a bucket, you put your hand in the bucket and you're gonna go, you're gonna use a heat gun for that. Um, and if that applies, uh, appeals to anyone, you could put that in the, the, yeah, I'd like to see that. And then I can show you sometime how to do that. Okay. So, um, and I promise I won't burn down the store. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there we go. And I know I need some more time on this because remember I've got holes in my um, iron, the steam holes. So I want to make sure I move around those. And then you want to give it some pressure. Don't just let it sit. you got to give it a little bit of pressure. And then you'll have a really nice looking piece. Okay. Right. So if there's, again, if there's any questions, you can chat them in the, in the box now. And we will, um, oopsie. Now look, see, come in here close, Carrie. If you take a look, this H is lifting up. That means I don't have enough heat on him. So I've got to 
I have some more work to do on this stuff. He needs to, he needs to get really stuck down. Okay, so if there's any other questions that you have now, I'm happy to answer them while we're all live. If you have scan and cut or vinyl questions, or if you get, get an idea and you're watching this later, uh, put it in the chat because we do try to monitor that as we go. We have had two people say that they would love to see how it's applied to metal. Okay. Um, and we had someone else say they'd like to see how you combine vinyl with couching. Huh? Explain that a little bit more. What exactly are you wanting to see there? Yeah, so Brenda, if you could give us some more information on what you're looking for, that would be helpful. Yeah. So she said, I'd like to see how you combine vinyl with couching. What is this? Okay. All right. So this is going to take some more time to get it on there really well. So I won't take up your time anymore. Um, but Brenda, please give us uh, a little bit more description of what you're looking for. And because it sounds like an intriguing idea, I just want to make sure I'm understanding correctly. And um, with that, um, I think we will see you next week. And remember next week, so expo starts so you can come down to so expo on thursday friday saturday and sunday that is march 2 3 4 and 5 of 2023 at the puyallup fairgrounds so we look forward to seeing you there and otherwise we'll see you back here for another how do i next week bye bye